Hello and welcome to this Toronto's Open TX Mix Tip. In this Mix Tip, we're going to talk about setting up something called Camber and Reflex. Now, we are starting to play with discus launch gliders here and having a lot of fun. And Camber and Reflex are two ways that you can move the control surfaces at the back of a wing on a DLG to either provide a little bit more lift or to cut through the air so that you can get a little bit faster through the sky to the next part of lift. As with all things in OpenTX, there are loads and loads of different ways to do it. So what I'm going to do in this one is go through three versions, basic, intermediate, and advanced. I wouldn't recommend if this is the first time you're thinking about programming a Tyrannus for you to start with this video. We actually have a whole range of videos on the channel that go through some of the basics for setting up the Tyrannus. And then we have our OpenTX mix school that go through each of the mixes and kind of builds as you go along in terms of complexity. So in here, we'll look at these three. We'll start with basic, then look at intermediate and advanced. This video has been made for the, all those people who have been asking about this, particularly the last one, which was a gentleman called Bruce, Bruce Austin. So Bruce, this one's for you. Hopefully it will help you out, give you a couple of ideas and get you flying. So we'll start with the basic one first. Now this is a model that's set up very much the same way to the model that I actually have in my DLG at the moment. All the inputs have been set up in the normal way by default. I haven't deleted anything, but in the mixes, I only have three outputs. I have two for the ailerons that run the full length of each of the wings on my DLG, and we have the elevator at the back. The DLG I have here doesn't have a rudder, but it kind of lets me show how you set it up. Now what I've got here is, here is the view of the screen with all the different variables. There's my two ailerons, the left and right one, on channels one and two, elevators at the back. As I move the ailer on there, we are flying around, and I have a three position switch for SE that takes me either from camber into normal mode into reflex. So camber, both of the control surfaces are dropped slightly, behaving like flaps in essence. And then we have normal mode where they are in line with the aerofoil itself and then we have reflex where they're slightly turned up and that is where you get that extra little bit of speed but you sacrifice a wee bit of lift. Now the way I've done that is I've just used the standard stuff that we've done in every single video so far. I've just added an extra line under each of the lines for the different ailerons, one for camber and one for reflex. So if I just open that up, here it is, we've called it camber, we've assigned it to the switch position we're interested in and we've just set um, the source is max because we don't bother about an individual switch, we just want it to max, and the amount of difference and change that we want, 20%. So this is the number that if we wanted the effect to be more or less, we'd change it on here. So we have camber on both controls, we have it up here and down here, and you'll notice that the polarity is the same because we want the control surfaces going in the same direction might have to switch those round on your model. And then similarly with reflex, we've done the same thing, exactly the same stuff. This time though, the number is a different polarity because we want the control operating in a different direction and we've assigned it to the different position. The switch SE in the down position is the one that works. And that gives us our ability to move those control surfaces up and down into camber and reflex and have a normal mode to fly and still have our ailerons working. So that is the very basic one. Let's look at the intermediate next. So in intermediate, we've changed a couple of things. We're actually doing the switching from one mode to the other, not with the individual switch, but by telling OpenTX that we only want particular effects to happen in particular flight modes. And what we've done is we've set those flight modes up. So normal flight mode, which is the one that's there by default, we've just called that normal. And then we've set up flight mode one, which we've called camber, set that to the switch position that we had before, SE in the top. And then we set flight mode two to be reflex with SE in the down position. Now there's cool things in here. We can set global variables. We can fade in and out the effect. And we use flight modes an awful lot here to set things up. So now we've got that set up, there's a, one cool thing that starts to happen. It shows the flight mode, because it still works in exactly the same way. There we are, we're kind of moving from camber to reflex. But now if I jump on the Toronto simulator, it actually shows me the flight mode I'm in. So as I'm flying around, that all works. 
and we could also have set up voice alerts which I actually have on my radio to let me know which switch position I'm in. Now the only differences we have to make in the mixes is if we go back to where we were before everything is the same the only thing now is we're not using a switch we are just selecting the flight mode that we're interested in so if I just change that and say OK you can see now that it says which flight mode it's talking about it says reflex here mode reflex if I open that up change it back to what it should be it says mode camber if I actually had it for both modes it would say mode, camber and reflex and this is a really nice way to keep track of how you've got everything set up because it copies the name of the flight mode into all the mixes so you can keep track of what's going on. The third way which is the one that might hurt your head just a little bit is what I like the ability to do is to actually change the amount of reflex and camber in flight. Let me simulate this again so here we've got kind of the same thing there's our three positions moving around but this time we have the ability to select the amount of effect that we have for each of the positions so if I move SE back down again there we are we can either have no reflex or we can have a lot of reflex we can decide how that all works and as you move around you can kind of tweak it in flight depending on how you want to fly so let me show you how we've actually done this. Now at the moment the control surface is working the slightly the wrong way around but that doesn't really matter, you'd play with that on the model anyway. The first thing we've had to do is to set up those two rotary switches. So again we're using flight mode set up in exactly the other way but this time we've added two additional inputs for those switch 1 and switch 2, S1 and S2, those rotary switches. And what I've done if I open this up, I've set the input name Again, keeping it so we can keep track as CAMB or for CAMBA. Source is switch one, and we have just said that I only just want 20% of the weight because normally that switch would give me a range from minus 100 to plus 100, with zero being the middle position. I don't want that, I only want a range of something like zero to 40 so that that can be mixed into the output. So the way I've done that is I've just said I only want 20% of the value, but I do want you to offset it by 20% as well and that will put it in the middle. I've just turned it on for all the flight modes that we've got but it isn't enabled with a switch. And I've done that for the other one as well. This one's set to ref or for reflex. It's S2, same thing, this time minus 20 and plus 20. In fact this is a chance for us to fix that problem where we're going in the wrong direction. Let's make that the right way round. And now that should be working the right way. So those are going to be controls that are giving us a much smaller range of movement and don't go negative. If we then jump into special functions, what we've done in here is we've said that we want to, on special functions one and two, we, we turn it on. We then say we want to adjust global variables and we want the source to be camber and the second one, the source to be reflex. Now the reason we've done it that way round is we, if you try to add S1 here, let me just show you what this is doing. If I look at global variables, there we are, we have minus, tw there's the um, flight mode 0, 1 and 2, and there's global variables 1 and 2. So at the moment they're minus 20 and 20 in that middle position. As I move the controls, you can see they go to uh, minus 40 to 0, and for the other one it goes from 40 to 0. Yep. You see that? So now as we move the controls, they'll move and we can control the amount. So all we're doing here is we're using those rotary switches to control the amount that we actually want. So now we've got those things set up, we have flight modes and we have the ability to change global variables. We can use those global variables to change the amount of the effect in the mixes. So this is what we've done. So again it looks kind of similar to what we had in the intermediate but the big change here is that we are choosing the flight mode, there's no switches, the big change here is we've said the weight is now coming from global variable 1. So we're looking at camber here, so the mode is camber, it's called camber and it's getting its weight from global variable 1. Similar with reflex, 
then it's getting its weight from global variable 2. So as we move those rotary switches, so when we look at how that actually works, here that's maximum camber, minimum camber or camber off, that's the kind of default position, and then if we go into reflex, that's maximum camber and that's minimum. So that's kind of a cute way to do it. So again, very quickly on this advanced one, what we've done, we've set up a couple of more inputs. We have made sure that we're only getting a small percentage of the input that we want because we don't want it to go minus 100 to 100. You could change these flight modes on and off. I've just said, just have them there for all three. Flight modes we're using to change everything over. And then in special functions, we're then adjusting the global variables with those inputs that we set up. Make sure you click the on or the other side it won't work. And then in the mixes, we've just made sure that it's the global variable that's setting the weight of the effect. And that way, when we're flying, we can go into the three modes and we can also adjust the amount of the effect as well. So Bruce, hopefully that helps you out. Best of luck with your mixing and please let me know if you have any more questions. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. We try and release at least two videos a week, usually a quick tip on a Tuesday and a more in-depth video on a Friday. And sometimes we manage to get a few more out as well. If you're interested in radio control, then the playlists are useful to have a look at. Anything that's called Introduction To is an organized set of videos that teach you from first principles about the subject that you're interested in. But we also have information about the majority of popular open source flight controllers, how to build quadcopters, fixed wing models, reviews, setups, unboxing, all kinds of things in here as well. So if you haven't already had a look at the playlist, then I'd recommend going have a look through here to see if there's anything that takes your fancy. Finally, we do also provide updates through things like Twitter, Instagram, and also post all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse as well. So if you like what we're doing here on YouTube, have a look at those things and subscribe to us there and you'll find out what we're up to in advance of the videos coming out here on the channel.